Hello guys, today we're going to be doing a tutorial for GR Analyst. Um, GR Analyst is a really powerful radar program, um, but it is on the pricey side. But for what it is, I think it is totally worth it. So, I'm going to teach you how to use this program in its entirety from the basics all the way to downloading historical files. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first, you want to click on the file, and most likely if you're just opening GR Analyst, you're probably not going to have what is known as a, a polling. Polling is basically what you draw your radar data from. So what you want to do is you want to hit configure polling, and then you're going to want to add um, a source. I will link the source that I use in the description. Um, this is what um, most people will use for their GR Analyst program. Um, also, you can set um, however many intervals you want. I do 10 so I can get them as soon as possible. And then I like to retain the files for the max amount of time and keep at least 24 of them in the memory. Um, you're allowed 2 to 24. Next, well, you're going to want to start the polling. That's when all your warnings will load in and your um, radar data will load in. The radar data is going to take a bit longer to load in because it has to retrieve the, uh, um, the link from what you put in your configure polling. So here we have just a little bit of storms. These storms were severe a minute ago. This is live radar, by the way. Um, as you see, you have a few special marine warnings. Those are going to be your blue. Um, next, you're going to notice that you have these products on the side. I'm on base reflectivity. That's basically what shows your rainfall rate. Next, you have base velocity. Alternatively, you can just click the V key. Um, this shows rotation inside of a storm um, and is very useful for detecting tornadoes. Next, you have storm relative velocity. So this basically takes out all the storm motion. Um, it should be relatively equivalent to the velocity, but on occasion it will be different. Um, spectra width is the next one. This is, this, how I like to explain it, is basically the amount of turbulence in the air. Um, ET, or echo tops, that's basically how tall your storm is. For example, this storm is 41,000 um, 41, feet. Um, you can tell that from the bottom of the screen down here, as they hover over these pixels see 41.3 feet or 41.3 thousand feet that's what the K is your next um, setting is vertically integrated liquid this is just basically um, base reflectivity all the way up so it integrates it vertically as the name suggests um, this is kind of useful for detecting hail but there's a better one for hail later on. Um, VILD, this is vertically integrated liquid density. So this is basically the density of the vertically integrated liquid, if that makes any sense. Um, next um, is, oops, wrong one. <clears throat> I clicked the wrong key. Um, o, this is percentage of severe hail. So this is an algorithm it uses, it takes the largest hail it can find and puts a percentage on what it thinks the max hail can be. Um, MEHS, uh, this is basically uh, the how large the hail is. As you can see here, this one's 0 .15, 0 0.51 inches, so not quite severe. And as you can see, that's what the hail size says. Um, it's also up here. 
So, you know, icons, MDA icons, that's, uh, well, there's not one right now, but they look like, I guess, there's one that kind of looks like a circulation type thing, kind of has a circle with arrows, and then the other one's a, that, it's a triangle, it'll be green, yellow, red, or pink, based off of the circulation. Um, in rot, this is rotation. Um, if it's rather circular like this, then there's um, more centralized rotation, what we would consider tighter rotation. If it's more of a longer band, then that's more or less broader rotation. So not nearly as tight as the other kind. Uh, ZDR, or Differential Reflectivity. This is basically um, how much if the um, if you're getting more or less rain. So it's really hard to explain. Um, basically, if you're getting more rain, you're going to get this color. Less rain, you're going to get these colors. Yeah. This is easy, this is good for detecting inflow notches, um, in case you think you see a CC drop, which is the next product, correlation coefficient. Uh, this, as it sounds like from your math class, uh, is correlation coefficient. Um, it literally takes the object from the air, because it sends out a horizontal and a vertical beam, um, measures it, and if they're all random, then it's going to read a lower value. If they're all like raindrops, however, they're going to read a higher value. Um, so that's the correlation coefficient. Um, you can tell if it's a debris ball if um, you get the blues, because that means that the, the items aren't, like, they're not very homogenous. They're very, they're different from each other. Um, differential phase. This one doesn't really have too much uses. And it is really confusing to read. Um, so not many people really use this, but it's on here. KDP, um, that's um, I just forget what that was. Uh, well, it's another one that's not really particularly useful, but it shows um, how much more rainfall you're getting. So basically, this pixel here um, means that you're getting more rainfall than with some of these pixels. It's more of like a different of them as well. So, you come into the storm and you start to gain some uh, rain, so you're going to get a higher value. Then you get the precipitation core, you're going to have your highest value. As you leave the storm, you're going to start to get the negative values as you're dropping off. If that makes any sense. Hopefully that made sense. Um, and then HCA, that's hydrometer classification. The other way to tell is by hitting, going to base reflectivity and hitting the T. Obviously it's all rain because we're in Florida, but well, in Florida in April, but if it were to be snow or ice, it would have more of a blue color. If it was ice, it would have red or an orange. Then you can select your tilt. This basically goes up in the atmosphere. So as you see, it goes up. But as a subsequent effect, um, you're gonna lose more and more data to eventually go to 19.4 degree tilt, which is looking almost straight up, basically. And you only get a small ring around the radar. Next, you can play the radar loop, which, as you see, you have the severe thunderstorm warning that just expired for that part of Florida. Um, you can uh, go through some frames, like by clicking these buttons, or alternatively, you can go to the first frame by clicking that, or the last frame by clicking that. 
I'm going to save these three icons for a different video. The zoom in button, not to, well, zoom in. Then you can clear your zoom or hit no zoom, same thing. You can also zoom out. Um, storm tracks. Eh. These are interesting. You have to set the speed in knots. So I'm just going to say like 20 knots. Apply. And then hit OK. Now I'm going to hit this storm. Storm track here. And as you see, it applies a storm track. Obviously, I didn't really try to have it go the right way, but. It doesn't. Yeah. You can also apply smoothing, but as a result of applying smoothing, you also lose some radar data. But it looks a bit nicer. So that's, that's the trade off there. The base velocity, you have something called delta v. That's a really bad example of it, but you see some of these pixels turn from. Oops, that's the wrong button. Uh, the green to red. This is good for determining gate to gate winds. Um, you can always just turn the radar off. Oh, let me clear. Move switch back there. We go. I'm gonna remove. So you can always remove the radar. Take away the hail icons, MDA icons, or the storm report icons. Um, I had it open for storm reports earlier. Darn. Yeah. And you know, there are a few tornado warnings up here, I guess. Well, actually, no, not anymore. Okay. Um, there were some storm reports of tornadoes going over here, and a few special marine things. Um, you can always change the color of your warnings to match what you're more used to by clicking warning settings. Um, you can, this is also where you set your warning server. This should automatically be loaded in. But if not, uh, I'll link that in the description. Um, I have mine set to, um, the colors that'll appear over here. Um, as you see. <laughs> Um, tornado emergencies appear black, reported tornadoes appear pink, tornado warnings appear red. On, on this warning, active warnings menu. Um, so that's why I have them set to this. You can always change the color by clicking it and then setting it here. So, you can highlight it, border it. Or put the foreground, you know, and then I turned alternatively. You can set it to National Weather Service colors or GR analyst colors. Well, really, just GR colors. Um, you can also change smoothing settings, other settings as well, including adding tables and stuff, different color tables for the different products. Um, also for sites, this is basically your radar site. Um, you can add them to your, oh, say here's a storm report. Let's load it in. See if I turn off storm report that disappears. Um, you can um, add a favorites. As you see, I added it to my favorites. Um, you can select a radar you can um, head into settings, and that um, has everything with how from launching GR Analyst to automatically connecting to your polling on the startup. You can also add and remove uh, favorites from here. So I'm going to remove the Melbourne um, Melbourne one, but I'm also going to connect to the Raleigh one. Why did that not remove it? Hold on. Sometimes it takes a while to load like that, but it's whatever. I don't think it removed. There we go. Okay. See, not no longer on my favorites list. As you see, there's probably some showers moving out. You can also click 
double click the warning and it'll automatically take you to the closest radar. See? I clicked on no it didn't. It's just loading. Oh, stupid. Hold on. Let me go back to this radar. When the program responds, there it goes. See? And it loads. Um, these typically don't have anything in them. Well, I mean, they just have the different tilts. And then derived, those are all the derived products from these. You can also select settings for algorithms. At uh, GIS, you can um, select and unselect some options. Like, for example, if you don't want the background, you can click no background and it turns the entire thing black. You can also have it show county names, but I have it on cities because the warnings window will automatically tell me what county it's for. On panels, you can have more than one panel. So, for example, two, you can have um, base velocity and um, base, base velocity and base reflectivity, for example on one screen, which is really useful for detecting tornadoes. But also you can have four panels. Have velocity here, oops, screen, later, correlation coefficient here, and differential reflectivity here. And I have a really good setup for detecting a tornado. I'm gonna go back to one panel. You can also um so place file manager, let me take this over here. This is where you can load place files like um, convective outlooks and stuff. I will link it to, um link something um, for you there too. For place files. Um you can also disen um, disable your tilt over here. But you mainly want that. Um, and you can also show or hide the warnings window. The ants will close in, automatically turned off. Also, if you wanted to view a warning, you can just click the warning and it will pop up the warning text automatically for you. This is really useful so you don't have to continue checking back with the National Weather Service clicking and reading the warning there, there, it'll just automatically put it up there for you. And then, as you see, winds at greater than 34 knots, hail less than 0.75 inches. You can also turn off the warnings by just clicking that. These checkboxes will automatically turn off warnings if they have been issued. So say you wanted to get like a really picturesque you could turn off all the tornado warnings if there's one issued. I'll really turn them all off. And then you can come over to um, GIS and just turn off all of these. And then you'll have a black background or whatever background color you choose um, as the background. And then you can get a really picturesque um, picture of a hook echo. You can also select fonts for your cities and counties. You can show city thresholds, radar sites, roads. Um, and you can also select background colors and other colors as well. So that about covers it for this video. So until next time, stay safe.